Now, in the world of global logistics, what happens when the lights go out? How would your supply chain deal with a trans-regional blackout after a sudden and long-lasting power outage? Does it make sense to prepare for a supply chain resilience scenario that would put life as we know it on hold? And if so, how much preparation makes sense? Well, Marco Felsberger, Global Head of Resilience at Gebruder Weiss, is here to tell us just that and more about that journey. Marco, let me hand over to you. Thank you very much for joining us. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, thanks a lot to Sven and Christian for the great presentation, which fits by, uh, by coincidence very good to this topic. Uh, why did I say uh, coincidence? Because if Sven was on short notice, I was on very, very short notice. Uh, I was asked yesterday afternoon to jump in for a colleague who had an emergency at home. Uh, and I hope uh, I was able to put some, some interesting slides um, together and insights regarding the topic blackout. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. Um, yes, before I start, uh, a brief introduction, who am I? Um, uh, I work at GW, Gebrüder Weiss, it's an Austrian logistics company, and this will not be a, a sales pitch uh, for sure, but a, a brief introduction about me and, and Gebrüder Weiss, because it's not so well known as, as maybe DHL. Um, yes, uh, I had a group uh, which is called Resilience, Quality and Audit, uh, and we are, we are responsible uh, yeah, for all operations in this regard on a global scale uh, for our company. Um, yeah, what, what else is interesting maybe, uh, I love to teach and, and uh, next to my job on the weekends uh, I have the opportunity to teach at three universities. It's always about the topic risk, resilience and security and security risk management especially. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Sven uh, said, uh, uh, made an impressive statement of how old DHL is uh, and, and, and Deutsche Post is. Uh, this is maybe the only thing we can compete <laughs> currently with DHL uh, is, is our age and we are even a bit older, so we are the world's oldest logistics and transportation company, Gebrüder uh, Weiss. This history and this tradition is of course as well a legacy for, for all of us. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm joking sometimes when I, when I talk to my board members, uh, this is very good for risk and resilience management because uh, the, especially the family board members do not want to be the ones where this history ends <laughs> for 500 years. Uh, so uh, this is a good thing, uh, but what else, uh, what else we have to, to think of uh, is how we make this transition. And this is what, what, what the previous presentation uh, also pointed out very well. We have to take the history, but we have to ensure that we're not stuck in history. So we have to transition from yesterday uh, to today and, and think of tomorrow and, and, and be very adaptable and resilient in this, in this uh, kind of way. Um, yeah, how do we do this? So we always focus on the, on the customer. We try to deliver service excellence uh, and, and resilience is a very important part of that. Why? Because a service excellent in, in our view is when we can deliver things. It's not always the best price or the, or the, or the fastest route or, or whatever it is. We want to deliver the things um, consistently. This is the goal uh, which we are pursuing. Um, before we go into the topic, Blackout, just a brief overview that you have an idea uh, what we are doing and how big we are uh, at Gebrüder Weiss. We are mainly focused on, <clears throat> on land transportation, so this is our main area. We all also grew a lot in, in air and sea. This was also due to the uh, impacts of COVID and, and, the, and the tailwinds we had there uh, and the good uh, circumstances, of course. Uh, we also do supply chain management and so on, warehousing. And, and one thing not on this presentation here, but uh, I'd like to mention it, we are also very good at, at transportation security and supply chain security. Uh, Claudia is also here, so if, if you want to take it, uh, to talk about it, uh, have questions about it, we can, uh, we can talk in the, in, the, in the breaks as well. Yeah, uh, what is our global footprint? As I mentioned, a bit smaller than DHL, uh, for example. Uh, 8,400 employees worldwide in 34 countries uh, and, and with 180 sites. Uh, this is a size which we say it's, it's, it's quite reasonable, it's, it's quite big, and it puts some challenges on us as a security, as a resilience team, because we have a very decentralized organization and we have to, 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 to have a, a, yeah, a very, uh, I would say, clever approach with limited resources to distribute uh, resilience and security programs uh, out in our orange world. Uh, by the way, we are orange as well, but we're not responsible for, the, for painting the, the, the airplane in the, in the previous presentation. Uh, yeah, last slide about the company, and then we dive into the topic, uh, promised. Uh, our revenue, so we are very proud of that. Uh, last year was our, our best year. We had over 3 billion uh, euros in revenue. Of course, uh, the, the RNC department, uh, the RNC um, um, operations had a big uh, impact on that as well. <clears throat> yes. Um, sorry. Now here it is. 
blackout. In Austria, it's a very prominent topic. Uh, in Germany, a bit, but I'm not sure how it's how it's seen internationally. Maybe can you give me a short raise of hands? Who has dealt, heard, or or, or in in any way have contact with the topic blackout in the sense of a longer-lasting business uh, power outage? Okay, these are not uh, so many. Uh, so I hope I can I can give you a few insights and 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 a bit of a background and why it could make sense, even though it seems like a very big and very very overwhelming topic to prepare for it. At least uh, some basic preparations. Um, how is my presentation uh, presentation structured? I will give you a brief overview uh, about topics. Uh, I'm very happy that not too many are familiar with. Uh, with a blackout or a longer lasting power outage because uh, I think this is very important to understand the problem and understanding the problem is always the first step to, to find solutions. Next, uh, next part will be uh, about the impact. So this is quite easy for me. It, it will be uh, a, a quick slide because if the, lights, if, if the electricity is gone, there is not much we can do anymore. So uh, our life, as, as the introduction was, uh, will come to a standstill immediately. The life, as we know, is over for a certain time. Um, and this is the interesting part of it. Um, yeah, and after that we go into contingency plans. I will give you a brief overview of how we dealt with it or how we are dealing with it and, and maybe uh, some inspiration how you could do that as well. Um, <clears throat> when you think uh, about blackout, you maybe have a picture in mind. And maybe the first picture is something like this. It's like a, a, a doomsday prepper, uh, worst, worst kind where we say, okay, a bit crazy, but what do we need to do if nothing works anymore? Maybe if this wasn't your picture, uh, you had this picture in mind. Reminded to the COVID pandemic where everyone was hoarding uh, toilet papers and so on, irrational actions, irrational decisions uh, made by a, by, a, by a huge impact event. Um, yeah, <laughs> how do I put it? Um, Rest assured, you're not alone. When I was talking to my board members, when I uh, had the order, so uh, maybe as a bit of a background, we are considered critical infrastructure in Austria, so we have to deal with such topics because the, 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 the government and the society in Austria is relying on us uh, that we can still deliver even in such big events. And I was introducing the topic blackout first time to my, to my, uh, to my board members. Uh, they, they were thinking I was giving them a, a, a report of my last, Friday night, uh, last night Friday out with my friends where we had too much, uh, where we drank too much and, 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 and had too much um, yeah, uh, wine and slept in. But this is not the case. Here is a, a more serious light, all, all, all jokes aside, uh, a more serious light. This is the global risk landscape. Uh, of the World Economic Forum, uh, and they put this together for several years, and this is a, a, a representation I, I like very much. Why? Because it shows the interconnectedness and the complexity of the world. And they put together some of the of the of the most um, um, or of the biggest risks, which had which would have a huge impact on the uh, on, on on the global society, if you like it. And I highlighted a few uh, of them because they would be immediately impacted in the case of a blackout. Um, <clears throat> when we talk usually of cascading effects in such, such complex systems, so this means one, one falling domino uh, affecting the next one and we have a cascading uh, effect and, 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 and crisis, uh, a topic like a blackout would immediately uh, knock out, uh, for example, the, the critical information infrastructure. What does this mean? We would not be able to communicate anymore within uh, most likely 30 minutes. I will come to that later. Second big thing is the collapse of systematically important supply chains. Um, be it pharmacy, be it uh, uh, water supply, be it uh, sewage, wh whatever you can think of will not be there for a certain time. And we have to prepare for that. We have, as individuals, we should prepare for it, and as companies, we should prepare for it as well. Uh, third thing I highlighted here is um, the collapse, uh, uh, collapse or lack of public infrastructure services. Um, we were talking to the Austrian government, uh, and this will be the same in whole Europe. Uh, the, the, the blue light organizations, police, fire departments, ambulances, they will not be there to help you in, in such a situation. We are used to that we call them and they, 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 they will come. First, we most likely will not be able to call them. Second, they have other duties, they have other tasks to take care of. They have to, to secure uh, the, 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 the critical infrastructure like hospitals and so on and so forth. So we are for a certain time here on our own. Not wanting to, 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 to uh, go into the doomsday prepper thing, but there are certain things we can and should do. Um, so the impact is quite big. Uh, now you may think, okay, maybe we are not affected. Maybe this is only an Austrian problem. Uh, I, I have to regret <laughs> to inform you that, that this is not the case. What you see here is the map of the NZOE, that's the European Network of Transmission System Operators, and every country in the same color is within one uh, power grid network. 
you see, if, you, if, if your country on the, on the, on the, on the map is blue, uh, you are in it as well as, as Sven would have put it, you're <laughs> screwed, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and this is the big thing. And we had several issues over the last years in, 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 in the Netherlands, in, 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 in Spain, in Austria, everywhere. Uh, and the problem is, if one country fails, or if in one country the problem gets big enough, uh, it cascades to every other country, and, and this is what we would call it a blackout. A blackout is a trans-regional, uh, longer-lasting power outage. Longer-lasting meaning roughly 24 hours or more. Um, yeah, and, and, and we had several incidents in, in, that, in that regard, uh, and, and we were talking to the Austrian power grid, this is the, the Austrian operator for the power grid uh, network, and they, they, they told us that uh, at least in the, in the last two years they had three incidents where they were very close uh, to, not uh, to be not able to handle it properly, uh, and then it would have cascaded uh, through the system. And the good news is they are working on it, they're preparing for it, uh, that's, that's, that's the important news. Uh, the bad news is they also say that, that it's impossible, it's impossible to safeguard the whole system. The reason behind that, um, I want to highlight now uh, in, in, in this very layman presentation of the European power grid, uh, and, and, and bear with me, I'm not a technician, but uh, we tried from the security perspective and resilience perspective to, to understand the problem. And if, 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 if there is a technician here in the room, uh, I'm happy to, 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 to ask you for more details. Um, <clears throat> The European power grid, as you see it here, uh, operates at a 50 hertz equilibrium. A 50 hertz equilibrium means that at all times this equilibrium must be maintained. It's a very sensitive system and I think 0.1 hertz up or down is already too much and, and, and would put the power grid at risk for a blackout. Um, and as it was designed back then, uh, in, 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 in I think 20 or 30 years ago, uh, it was designed with, with uh, a very stable energy source in mind. So we had these uh, um, this, 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 uh, nuclear plants, we had the coal plants, we had the water plants, uh, and as bad as they may be for the environmental uh, view, as good they are for stability of the power grid, especially for the stability of a power grid which does not like volatility. Uh, this is a very important part. That's also a thing where, 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 which we have to think of when we talk sustainability, because the infrastructure for sustainable energy is maybe not there as we, as we would need it when we push further and further. Um, yeah, so that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's how it was designed. So we have on the one side the producers of energy, everything they produce must be consumed at the, on the other side. You see it here with households or industries or whatever. Uh, and if they produce more, the consumers need to consume more. If the consumers consume less, uh, they have to deregulate and, and have to produce less, the producers. So this is how this 50 hertz equilibrium is established. Uh, in and out must be roughly the same, the same amount. Back then, this worked quite fine because with these caloric uh, power plants, you have an easy thing. You can pull the lever, so to speak, and increase pro uh, the, 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 or, uh, the, the productivity or decrease the productivity. But what did we do in the, in, the, in, the last, in the last years? You guessed it already, uh, we added a lot of renewable energy sources. And this is not a critique on, 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 on renewable energy, please don't get this wrong. This is just a, a, a reminder that we added a lot of volatility to a system which doesn't like volatility, volatility at all. Uh, what do we do? We have, uh, we have all the renewables. Uh, for example, in Germany, they are in the north, in the north, uh, <coughs> north Sea, uh, the wind turbines, for example, there is the production of the energy, and in the south, there is the consumption, there is the industry, the heavy industry. So you have to, to, you have to, to, to transport uh, the, the, whole, the whole electricity from north to south. To do this properly, the Germans, and, and this was a report from two years ago, uh, Germany would need uh, roughly 6,000 kilometers of these power grid lines uh, through, through Germany that they can do this properly. Why? Because also such power grid lines have a capacity limit and you cannot uh, send electricity there as, as you like. Um, 6,000 kilometers needed. Two years ago, uh, there were 500, 600 kilometers built in Germany. So we have a critical infrastructure issue uh, and this is exacerbating the problem, especially when we move more and more uh, towards uh, sustainable energies. So we added a lot of volatility on the production side, and we added a lot of volatility on the consumption side. You see it here, we have uh, almost every house now have a, a solar panel on the roof, we have Teslas, they need to, they need to refill uh, the electricity at some point, uh, and this is not planable, this is not, not, not a thing you can, you can proper plan for. Yeah? And 
remember we have this 50 hertz equilibrium which must be maintained at all times otherwise we have uh, a thing called the frequency drop uh, and this frequency drop would or could cause or would be the most likely reason for a blackout uh, so volatility added on both sides uh, but the system is not not made for it a huge a huge topic uh, uh, also in the future when we think of how can we maintain all the all the all the sustainability we want to implement yeah, so that's that's the basic setup of the of the of the power grid. Um, now I want to to end this first part with the definition of the blackout. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a trans-regional and sudden, meaning several European countries affected lasting power outage. There are different uh, different part, uh, definitions out there, but we chose this one uh, because we, we 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 said we need something to work on, and we work with this, and we need a shared understanding in the company that everyone knows what are we preparing for. This is the one thing. Up to 24 hours, experts are guessing that it's um, that it's 24 hours to three days until Europe is running again. Uh, if, if such an event hits us, yeah. Another important topic we, we should not let out of sight is the is the side effects we are we are we will have to deal with uh, after uh, a power outage when the when the energy is back again. Uh, uh, the, the, the experts, the infrastructure experts we talked to, uh, uh, told us that roughly when they shut down, for example, a data center or, or parts of servers, when they have to shut it down uh, without planning, um, that roughly 30% of the hardware is damaged. 30% of the hardware. And, and, and now think a big bigger. Uh, let's say uh, three or four European countries are affected and have these troubles, and 30% 30 of, uh, 30 of the hardware is not available anymore when they try to restart. That means there will be a huge backlog and, 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 and we will feel the impact of the power outage much longer than the, than the actual power outage will is. I do not need to, 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 to talk with you as, as experts about the supply chains when you touched it as well. What happened after Corona and, and, and during Corona, uh, supply chains were, were, were out of sync, uh, so to speak, for quite some time. Now imagine we turn off everything. Who of you would know or your operations would know where your trucks are, where, where the goods are, what have you ordered, which order went through or not? These are basic things. Yeah? Uh, and, and, and how long do you think, when we, when we turn off the energy again after two days, how long do you think it would take uh, until you know where your trucks are and your goods are? It will take some time. So the impact, the, 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 the knock-on effects will, will take much longer than, uh, uh, than, than the actual power outage. This is something we have to keep in mind. And this is also something we as Gebrüder Weiss said we won't prepare for. We do not have the illusion that we, that we keep going when everything is down uh, and, 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 and be the, the lighthouse and, and everyone could come to Gebrüder Weiss and we deliver something. That's not our goal. What we want to do is, is to shut down controlled, to avoid as much damage as possible and ramp up again as quickly as possible to be there again for the customers. This is our goal, uh, which I will uh, come to later. Um, <coughs> yes. Uh, now. As promised, quickly the impact of the, of the blackout and, and just some interesting facts, because I could leave it with this slide, uh, everything you know will not work anymore. Uh, some, some things uh, worth pointing out, in, uh, although, is, is for example uh, communication. Mobile phones, we talked to the Austrian Telecom, uh, the, 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 the biggest provider in Austria for, for, for mo uh, mobile connections. Uh, they told us that the masks they use have roughly uh, a buffer for 30 minutes. So this is everything we got when we need to communicate in a blackout case. 30 minutes after that, your cell phones will not work. Landlines, a bit longer, but uh, this is another, will not help us because how many of you have, have still landlines operating? Um, this is a problem. And when you ask them again, inofficially, they said it will not be even 30 minutes uh, because there is, is something called the New Year's effect. Imagine there is a big power outage. Everyone is trying to call someone. Uh, the masks, is, uh, the, the, the receptions are overloaded and, and it will shut down immediately. So. That's a, an important information which we need for preparation because everything which we haven't defined until this point will not work. If you have a crisis plan and, and, and have not defined who will come to the company uh, and who will, who will, who will uh, take care that everything is shut down properly, how would you inform them now? Not possible. You need to do something upfront. And everyone who served uh, in the army knows that there are drills, for example, how hard it is to really maintain an, an, an order if you have no, no, no room for alignment there. One thing, communication uh, will not be there. Uh, uh, money, 
it's also also a big a big topic then because uh, uh, the payment methods, the, the 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 card readers, the withdrawal machines, this will not work anymore. So if you do not have money at home uh, and and do not have a supply of food or something a bit at home, uh, you will not be able to buy something. No one will be able to operate it. Why is this important for us as company and not only as individuals? We have to take care uh, of that because if we ask crisis team members to come into the office, we have to ensure that they do not have to worry about their families. So they, they have to have some backup supplies at home uh, and, and, and then we have a relatively good chance that they will come. Uh, that, is, that is how we approach it. The Austrian government, uh, for example, uh, suggests that we should have uh, 14 days of supply of water and food. This is, has nothing to do with prepping in the sense, but just to have 14 days of, of food and, and water at home, uh, just in case, then is the, the worst thing will be over and then you, can, you, you do not want to go out there. Uh, in, in, in such a scenario, because there will be a lot of opportunistic crimes as well, what is expected. So if, if, if the power is out, you, you can imagine looting and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, another important topic, especially for us in the logistics, uh, uh, the, the, the refueling, gas stations will not work. So we, we, we made an assessment in, in Austria with the government, how many, how many uh, gas stations are operational without electricity poorly manually. Yeah? Uh, turned out, uh, funny <laughs> fun fact, turned out that if we could change it, as Gebrüder Weiss, we have some of, of, of these rare old <laughs> uh, old gas stations where you can change it still, but most of the PPs and, and, and what you found out there uh, will not work. They have no chance to operate manually. So uh, also a thing to, to keep in mind uh, when, you, when, you, when you deal in this crisis. Yeah, uh, blue light organizations, I mentioned that already, will not be there. Uh, so even if you can call the police or the ambulance in, in, in this certain time, Time frame where, they are, where, the, where the reception for the mobile phone is there, they will not come. What does this mean for us as a company? Uh, if we have employees and they hurt themselves or, or they're injured, this is worst case scenario because I do not want to have someone with, bro with a broken leg uh, lying next to my office, to put it very bluntly. Uh, so we have to be careful uh, how, we, how we safeguard them out of, the, of, out, out of the office and so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, electricity, water, uh, I touched this already, everything will not work. Um, what is maybe also important for us as, as, as security managers is that all the security systems, of course, will not work. Maybe we have backup power supplies. Uh, then I would, I, would, uh, I would ask you, do you really want to, to, to have them running, backup power supplies, if you are the only, the only building in, 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 in a few kilometers with the lights on, uh, you may attract the wrong people. I don't know. Maybe you do not want to use it in that case anyway. Uh, but what does this mean for, for us in the, in the preparation phase? We have to basically define someone who takes uh, the key, who knows where the keys are, and who makes this round and check, are the windows closed? Are the, the roof windows closed? Are the doors locked? Basic stuff, but you have to take care of it up front. Yeah, uh, and maybe an interesting fact, I'm also in the working group uh, regarding this blackout topic uh, in Austria with the food industry, uh, and, and they brought during the workshops, they brought up a, a very interesting topic that you see the not, uh, knock, on, knock on effects and, and how long it will, will last. Uh, they told us that they have, uh, as every supermarket, a lot of refrigerators and freezers in there where they cool the, 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 the stuff, which, which must be cooled. Um, and they said, since the systems, these refrigerators are running so stable and proper, uh, there are not a lot of people who can maintain them anymore, uh, uh, who, are, who are specialized in maintaining that. And if you have no electricity for three or four hours, there is a gas in it, it runs out, this is not dangerous in itself, not dangerous in itself, uh, but they won't restart basically after, after that. And you have a handful uh, uh, technicians who can re refill uh, and thousands of refrigerators afterwards who need refill. So you see this gap, they said, if we do not prepare yet, it will take up to a year until, until all the supermarkets refrigerators are up and running again, because you have a lot of them. Uh, and this is, these are things, very good and important things that you work on it, because now they plan for it and, and, and we're quick and everyone uh, still remember the, the pictures uh, during COVID, what an empty aisle in the supermarket can do to the, to the psych of, of, of people. So this is a very important topic. Um, yes, this, uh, this, this was the main part about the, about the impact, uh, about the blackout impact. Uh, and now I would like to, to give you a brief uh, overview, a brief glimpse in, in what we did as Gebrüder Weiss, how we tackled such a big topic. And, and uh, for us, the most important part at the beginning was that we, that we make it a bit more digestible because blackout, nothing works anymore. First reaction is, uh, so what, what, what can we do? What sh shall we do? We go home and hope and wait until everything is over. That's not uh, the approach we said we want to pursue. What we said is uh, we, we, we analyzed this topic first. We, we, we created a presentation a bit more in depth than this one that the people understand what is the issue because understanding, uh, understanding is 
the first the first step to solution, uh, and then we, we we distributed it. We made trainings. We we we, we gave presentations to everyone in the in the branches in our in our network in in Europe, uh, in, in, in mainly in Europe because uh, this is the, the main area uh, we we cover currently for this for this scenario, uh, and then we took a branch, our biggest branch in Maria Lanzendorf with the head of security there, we developed plans in detail. Uh, so we, we, go, we went through with him uh, and said, okay, step by step, you're in the, in the elevator. What, what can you do now? What, what is the emergency plan for that? And so on and so forth. Then we trained them again, our branch, uh, our local security heads, we trained them again and distributed the information. Now they are working on it on their own. I mentioned we are a very decentralized organization, uh, which is a good thing, I guess, but, but uh, you cannot manage everything. So we, we gave it to them, they work on it, they report back to us, and then we know uh, how far they are and we can maybe stress test some of their assumptions. Um, this, is, this, this was the first step, uh, the training and the preparation phase uh, and the information phase. Uh, second thing is, uh, I brought here an, 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 an brief overview. We have a much more detailed uh, uh, process flow how uh, every branch should access this topic. And we start with, 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 with the placard, there's a power outage, and then we first have to verify, is it, is it really uh, 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 something which lasts longer or is it just a, uh, uh, a brief local uh, power outage? Because you do not want to send everyone home for a 20-minute blackout in your district. That, 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 that's not the, the goal. We have to find a way to verify it. Uh, after we ver verified it, we said, okay, there are basically two things we can start off. It's either during business hours or it's out of business hours. During business hours, the good thing is we do not have to, uh, to gather or put a lot of effort into gathering the, the, the crisis team together because they are most likely there or we can assign people to, to, to help us here. The problem is with the employees, with the visitors, uh, what do we do with them? This, is a, this is a, can be challenging, especially if you have visitors over, for example, uh, which came by plane. They will not be able to leave for, for a few days. What do you do with them? So you, at least in theory, you have to think of a room where you can put them. You have to, to separate some water and food for them uh, that you can, to, that you can uh, host them for, for a certain time. Uh, as I mentioned before, no ambulances will be there. We have to consider a situation where it's dark, nothing works anymore, uh, as, as, as we are expecting. Uh, people do not see where they go, uh, and we have to prevent injuries. So how do we do that? So we add to, the, to our emergency kits, for example, a flashlight. It's, it's easy things which can help a lot, uh, which, which can help a lot in the, in the end. Yeah, this is during office hours, during the business hours. Out of business hours, uh, we do not have to deal with employees and, 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 and visitors, that's the good thing, but we have somehow to gather the crisis team together within, within our operations. Uh, and this again, remember, uh, I'd like to remember you without communication. So they have every, everyone who is uh, appointed as a crisis member team have an exact plan at home and they know uh, in which office to meet. Uh, we heard uh, one kilometer, uh, one kilometer long, uh, long city where DHL is operating, for example. Imagine you have a big office or a big area and, 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 and seven people have to meet. Where would you meet there? Yeah? You have to define everything. It, it sounds a bit stupid <laughs> to define, go into this room and be there at three o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, whatever the timing is, but we have to do it because otherwise we cannot ensure that they even meet. And this is where we draw the, the border, so the, the, the line, so to speak. Uh, what do we need to prepare and, and where, do we, where, 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 where there is need anymore to prepare anything? Because it's, every crisis is different and we have to develop with the situation. And we said the main thing we want to assure is that they can communicate and that they meet. Everything else we hope to figure out on their own or they have to figure out on their own. Uh, and this is where we were focusing on. Um, yes, then we executed the, the blackout protocol, the crisis plans, uh, this basically means a controlled shutdown. Very important, talk to your uh, IT department, uh, because remember, you can avoid a lot of damages when you have a controlled shutdown. Check if the uninterrupted power supplies give a long enough time, uh, time span to shut down controlled, for example. This, these are things we were checking. Uh, give people in the crisis team a plan which doors to lock. Uh, let them know where the, where the door, where the, where the key is for, this, for the doors, and so on and so forth. Give them a plan at hand, maybe. We put this all together in a folder. Uh, every branch ha has this in the office, and, and if we need it, uh, hopefully never, but if, if they need it, they put it, pull it out, they have a plan of the operations, they know where, 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 where the things are. We'll come to that a bit in, in, in a few minutes. Um, yeah, and then the, the interesting part, maybe for you, for those who listened, uh, is report back to the, to the corporate uh, crisis team, which would be me and my team, uh, but how would they, how would they report back uh, the status 
uh, if there is no if there is no communication. I'll, I'll cover that later. We, we have, there are possibilities uh, where we hope they, 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 they will work. Yeah, and this basically is it. We prepare everything, shut down control, and prepare for a quick ramp up again. Um, and sorry, so. Yeah, and here you see what we put together for the branches. So we have our, our blackout concept, uh, and, and we developed it with our biggest branch, and, and, and they literally put in where are the, 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 where's the water supply, where's the gas supply, where do you have to put the, pull the levers if you want to turn it on, off. Uh, very important. Uh, the elevators. Make sure everyone is trained on, on, on how to make a, a rescue on the elevator uh, on the crisis team, because the fire department, for example, will not come, and you do not want to have colleagues stuck in an elevator. Imagine this morning uh, the elevators took, took some time and then a lot of people were in it. Imagine there are uh, 10 people in it and, and they have to be there for days. That's not an option. So uh, what we did is we, we documented everything, uh, for, for example, for the elevator uh, rescue with pictures, where is the key, where to put the key that everyone who, is, who, who will be there would be able to, 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 to do it. Uh, this is not perfectly legal because you're not allowed to, in, in, in normal circumstances, to do it on your own without training in Austria at least. But in such circumstances, it's, it's, it, I think it's, uh, it's, it, it will be okay. Yeah, and then with the checklist, just, a, just as a brief idea what, what one of these checklists could be, uh, one department of ours uh, said, okay, we want to have a thought protocol. Uh, if, because they said, uh, if, if, if we shut down now, and, and now the, the memory is fresh, I knew exactly which truck I ordered and, 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 and who confirmed what and so on and so forth, I want to put it somewhere down, uh, because in two weeks I will uh, I have no chance to remember uh, what, what was the current status. This may be too much for many departments, for this department uh, it, it was perfectly okay, and this is how we approach it. We, we, we give it to our organization and they have to choose is it important enough or not. Uh, yeah, and uh, the last the last thing I want to uh, I want to highlight is because I mentioned it, uh, we have a communication line in place even for such a scenario. Uh, this is done via satellite phones, and I, ho I hope this will work because the satellite phones are not very cheap. Uh, but there is a bit, uh, yeah, experts are not sure. If, if it will work or not at the end. Uh, but but we, we, we are very confident uh, that, that, that this line of communication will be there. And how did we structure it? We have in, in my team, uh, we are the crisis team, the situation center, so to speak. Uh, we are there in shifts, uh, available 24-7, uh, and take care of, 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 of our part of the, of, of, of the satellite phone. Uh, what we also did, we distributed uh, it to, to, the, to the branches, which we identified in the business impact analysis as critical branches. We distributed it to the to them, uh, and, and, and now we are, of course, up front regularly testing it and, 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 and see how it works because uh, it's not exactly a, a Samsung or, or iPhone, it's, like, it's more like the old Nokia. Uh, you have to get used a bit to it, and you cannot use it indoors, you have to go outdoors. These are things you, you have to test, you have to ensure that the power is, uh, the, the, the battery is, is, is filled and so on and so forth. So there are some pitfalls which you have to test. Uh, what we also did for our branches is we gave them a cheat sheet uh, where to just, uh, because we do not want to to chat with them 24-7 uh, in our situation room. We gave them a cheat sheet, for example, if everything is okay, text us one. If, if you have injuries, text us two. If you, need a, 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 if you need us to call back, text us three, whatever it is. Just make clear that, that this is out there and that they know in the emergency how to use it. This is in the folder and hopefully someone knows then where the folder is and, and will, will, will open it up. This is one thing. What we also did is we defined some UTC time, uh, a time, uh, a window, a time window where we said, okay, in this time, be available. We will call every branch, which is critical, uh, and 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 and, and uh, yeah, get get a status report from them. So five to ten minutes uh, with a report sheet they have to fill in uh, every day, and that's, this is what we're asking, uh, what we're asking for then. We then on the other end inform our, our board members and, 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 and can prioritize uh, restarting and, 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 and whatever is needing them with this information. So this is the basic setup how communication even in such a case uh, most likely will work and, and, and we will most likely be able to, to, to still can communicate. Remember, communication in this phase is key because if you cannot communicate you, you're blind, you, 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 we are not used to it anymore uh, and, 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 and this is what we want to avoid. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm already at the end uh, with, with, uh, with this very broad topic, uh, topic uh, blackout. I just want to briefly summarize. So uh, the problem is, is, is because people think, often think it's a very far-fetched uh, risk. Uh, it definitely isn't. It is, of course, a high-impact, low-probability 
how you do, how you put it. It depends, but it's just something didn't happen. This is important for the communication. But you have to showcase somehow why it's not so far-fetched. Because the power grid is fragile. We add more and more volatility with the renewables, uh, and the trend is more and more uh, towards uh, renew uh, re uh, renewable energies, and this will fragilize it even more. So be aware of the problem. Step number one. This is a very important thing. Step number two. Uh, look at the impact and then check what you can do or what you want to do as an individual and especially as company to mitigate those impacts as good as possible. Uh, because it costs resource, it takes time, uh, it's, 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 it's not for free, such a preparation as you know. Uh, and the last part is then for those parts you identified, uh, make, the, make your contingency plans, make sure they are documented, really documented, not like all the other plans we, 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 we do and they should be documented. This is a thing which should be really documented and, and maybe some, some feedback. Uh, which we get from our board, which is also interesting in the discussion with the board members. Uh, they were at the beginning, uh, let's put it, uh, put it that we're interested, <laughs> curious how, how this will turn out, this thing. Uh, but at the end, they said it's, it's, it's a very good scenario to plan for. Why? Because we have, uh, we, we, we tackle a lot of smaller crises. On the, on, on the way to, to this big scenario. So we have a lot of crisis plans and a lot of crisis uh, response plans now, uh, which are parts of the, of the, of the blackout plan, uh, but can be used and has been used two or three times already within our organizations for smaller, for smaller issues. And this is, this is what, what I wanted to, to emphasize again, that we should still take it serious, if, although it's, it's, it's a topic uh, not, not on everyone's, uh, on top of mind of everyone. So um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I could uh, bring a bit of, of insight uh, to this new topic, uh, maybe new topic for you, and I hope you enjoyed it, and, and I'm here for your questions, of course, now and, and later on. Thank you so much, Marco, for that very insightful presentation. Um, again, we've just got a couple of time for two quick questions, but you're here today, so people can catch up with you in the breaks, can't they, if they have other questions. Just um, quickly, does a backup power supply help in the scenario that you've been discussing? Uh, uh, yeah, we were discussing this quite some time, and, and, and this is interesting because you think you build it, you buy a backup power supply, especially for such occasions. But, but you have to think twice probably, and this is what we did, even in, in, in those locations where we have it, we, we told them, be careful if you use it, because you will be a lighthouse and people will be uh, frightened and frustrated and, and I don't know, and, and, and you may not want to, to, to attract uh, or let people know that you still have power supply. So, yeah, you have to analyze it if, if, if this is the thing you, you need, if you really need. Okay. And j just finally, what's the challenge? You touched on, on the fact that it's a high-impact, low-probability uh, event there in your summary, but, you know, what are the challenges that come with pr pr uh, preparing for such an event? Uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's the, how you frame the risk and how you communicate it. If, if, if I would put it in a risk matrix, this kind of risk, it would be somewhere out there in the, in the orange area uh, because it has a very low uh, probability since it has never happened in that way. It yeah? uh, doesn't mean it, it, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's completely unlikely to happen. So risk communication, I think, is always a big, uh, a big driver in, in, in how you get resources, and this is how we did it. We, we tried to, to present it in a different way and, and make aware, and then people have an understanding for that as well. Well, Marco, thank you so much for joining us and thank you very much for stepping in and at yep. the last minute, it's very appreciated and lots for us all to think about. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you very much.